Okay. Right. How are you guys doing? First and foremost, you're tired. Hey guys, I'm also tired. Eh? I am also tired. How did we get here, guys? It was Saturday just yesterday. Huh? It's not fair, eh? Well, since we're here, we might as well get into it, ne? So this is where we ended off uh, last time that we connected, which was last week. So the next thing, or what we want to do today, is we want to launch from this point. We already discussed uh, context-based uh, reasoning. Okay, and this is obviously from the perspective of knowledge capturing. Okay, we've discussed concept maps, and then they go on to context-based reasoning. But we discussed context-based reasoning when we we're speaking of uh, techniques and so forth um, in terms of your uh, application systems, right? So now just continuing with our knowledge capturing systems, right? Uh, we have obviously, and this is kind of like a summary of the key stuff that we still need to do is obviously just discuss quickly the barriers to the use of knowledge manage, uh, sorry, knowledge capture system, okay, which we'll do shortly. And this is more of a recap. The two mechanisms that they use, number one is to ask an er expert, and then secondly, to observe an expert. To observe an expert okay then uh, lastly they are saying research trends using learning by observation to capture knowledge management and then radio frequency identification uh, capture information for the purpose of identification via radio waves okay so this is the slide where we talk to the barriers, barriers uh, to the use of knowledge capture systems, okay? Now, one thing that they highlight here is that these can be organizational and they can be individual factors. But the good part is, I think these factors are very self-explanatory, okay? So whilst I added some meat to them, at the end of the day, um, I think they're very straightforward. So lack of awareness and understanding will obviously create problems for us to catch up the knowledge that we have within the business on the system okay then we also have then we also have your uh culture resistance this is not how we've been doing things why are we now having to do this stuff okay the moment you have that type of attitude in the company guess why it's going to be very hard for you to get people to start capturing Relevant information that would be helpful to other staff members within the business or even customers for that matter. Right. Then time constraints. At the end of the day, we're here to close a sale, to fulfill a contract, things that are obviously going to result in money coming in. So knowledge management or knowledge capturing is something that happens on the back end. You know, so it's not something that's going to immediately or directly generate income. So if we are pressed for time, this is one of those things that ends up falling on the wayside. Then technological complexities, the more complex the, the system is, the less likely people are going to capture stuff. The more user friendly it is, the more likely they're going to capture stuff. Okay. Then you've also got lack of training. Okay. Very closely related to the previous point. Obviously, if you're not properly trained, you're not going to use this thing because you don't know how to. Okay. And then fear of job security. In some cases, employees may be hesitant to share knowledge as they fear that doing so could reduce their job security or make them replace it. This is a real thing. Okay. Especially in environments where it's uh, we were not reassured that your job is here. We will be keeping you manual, don't worry about it. 
Despite your many mistakes, you will be safe. ETC, ETC. Okay. If we assure you, then you will have no fears of sharing your knowledge with Mr. Shabala. Okay. Then, poor integration with daily work flows. Guys, and I've experienced this in, 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 in corporate, where the things that people are sharing, it might not necessarily be in relation to knowledge, but the, 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 the things they're saying must be done does not nicely connect with the work or the process. So it makes, it, it pulls you out of your routine in order to fulfill those tasks. So if knowledge capturing does not flow nicely with the workflow, going to be put on the back and then you'll end up saying, no, I'm going to do it uh, on Friday, or I'm going to do it on Tuesday, or I'm going to do it later, because it doesn't fall into the natural process. And what happens is that day comes and you don't actually do it. Does that make sense? Okay. Then, uh, lack of incentives. We need to encourage people, all right, uh, to actually be motivated to do so, to contribute, to capture their knowledge. Then confidentiality and security concerns. Employees may be reluctant to share knowledge if they are worried about the security of the information or if there are unclear guidelines on what information can be shared. Inconsistent use. If only some members of the organization use a system, it can lead to incomplete knowledge bases, which diminishes the overall value of the Okay, very self-explanatory, but there you have it, okay? So that's a recap of what we covered, not only today, but also last week. All right, so moving on to the core of what we'll be discussing today, knowledge organizational systems, practices, and implementation. Knowledge sharing. We came from knowledge capturing, now we're going to knowledge sharing. And the key uh, learning outcomes there is develop knowledge management processes by designing systems for appropriate organizational knowledge and information management. Okay. Um, then discuss the barriers of different types of knowledge systems. Okay. So here, knowledge manage, uh, sorry, knowledge sharing systems that organize and distribute knowledge. Okay, you've got knowledge repositories, uh, you've got your two types of explicit knowledge sharing. Remember we said explicit knowledge is what? You guys remember what explicit knowledge is? Take a guess, guys. At least you're responding. Take a guess. Anybody. Remember we spoke about tacit and explicit. What is tacit? <laughs> oh my goodness. Tacit is remember when we observe. When we observe. And then explicit is tacit. Explicit is yes, but it's all documented. Does that make sense? Explicit is documented. So we can, there's a process. There's a process to it all, okay? So here they're saying two types of explicit uh, knowledge sharing systems. Lesson, lessons learned systems and ex, expertise locator systems. This is where I want you guys to do your presentation on. The second one. Expertise locator systems, okay? But we'll talk more about that later. Then you've got corporate memory, then you've got platform independence, okay? So those are some of the key things. What is knowledge sharing? Okay, guys, we've gone through this before. So I don't want to revisit this, but obviously, if you go through the slides, obviously you guys can take a look at this. We were, we were just describing uh, tacit and, and explicit knowledge. And then there they're saying the purpose to promote knowledge sharing for reuse and innovation, technology, and strategic management. 
we can see we're revisiting this whole topic uh, topic okay so nothing really new there now here they're talking about uh computers as a medium so here the focus is you know we pretty much do everything via computers and so when they're saying computers are, as a medium for knowledge we're basically saying it's it's the platform through which a lot of our information is obviously shared we can either share information uh, naturally, so like we are sharing information uh, in class right now, we are verbally communicating. Does that make sense? So that's natural communication. Or it can be electronic, okay, which is where this computer story now comes in. And particularly pertaining to the World Wide Web or the Internet. Okay? And there are so many channels through the Internet where we are sharing knowledge. All right, so many channels through web pages that we acquire information. Okay, so that's what they're pretty much talking to when they say computers as a medium for sharing knowledge. Okay, then designing the knowledge sharing system. All right, function to enhance the organization's competitiveness by improving the way it manages knowledge. The more knowledgeable a company is, is that a good or a bad thing? Guys, you must talk to me, guys. Come on. I didn't wake up. Huh? I was saying, a more knowledgeable a company is, is it good or bad for the company? Does it make it more competitive or not? It's good. Does it make it more competitive? In a way, yes. Sir. Yeah, I love the fact that you said in a way. Why? Why in a way? All these people have more knowledge than the people who are organizations. Uh -huh. They all have the means to like to save one or create a new strategy. Uh -huh. But knowledge that they have to implement this strategy. I like what you said. They have the means. Knowledge gives you the means to implement something. If you don't implement, are you better than me? Okay, does that make sense? But if you implement the knowledge you have, then you are more competitive. Okay, if you don't implement it, up. All right, then that's a that's a problem. Okay, so that's why I say uh, it should it should make you more competitive because the assumption is you are implementing that knowledge. Okay, then uh, based on digital media hyperlinks. Okay, they're still talking to computers as a medium. Uh, crucial requirements for a successful knowledge sharing system. Collection and systematic organization of information from various sources. Minimization of upfront knowledge engineering. Uh, exploiting user feedback for maintenance and evolution. We need you guys' input to make sure that the system is better so that the better it becomes, the more user friendly or the more ideal for uh, the capturing of knowledge and the sharing of knowledge, all right, and the reuse of that knowledge. Then integration into existing environments, okay. For this system to be successful, this knowledge sharing system, we need it to be integrated into existing environments. Like I was saying, if it's not part of the workflow, then it becomes a bit of a barrier. Active uh, presentation of relevant information. Okay. Right. Okay. So barriers to the use of knowledge sharing systems. Okay. Doesn't integrate humans, processes, and technology. Okay. Somebody Google what that word is. If they attempt to target a monolithic organizational memory. What are we saying? Let's dissect this thing. What are we saying? What is this fancy English all about? What is it all about? I, I can tell, but she, I don't know why she's not saying anything. Talk to us. 
Large, powerful, large, powerful, and slow to change. So, which which definition do you think is applicable to 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 what we understand? So the one about rocks. Which one is it? Oh, okay. You guys also be doing it, huh? Yes. What, what are you doing here? Um, from one side, it says one of the fixed storage is made up of numerous electronic components. Uh -huh. The respective connections are all integrated into single layer semiconductor wafer or package. This package is into three integrated circuits. Okay. One of the storage architect architectures have evolved, have evolved to become popular choice for manufacturers. Okay. okay. So, and here it says that. Um, Structure and so memory can be fragmented, for example, uh, when there are many different ways of doing things and how we get different answers depending on, on who we are or it can be monumental. So, okay. terms, the greater terms would mean that um, when there's great regularity, control the systems. Great E, regularity. Um, yeah, great regularity, control the systems. Okay. Okay, great regularity control and consistency. Okay, so I can see how that can be a very great problem. If there's a huge amount of regularity, what does that mean? We can't just upload or capture things. All right? Or information cannot just be shared, because they were looking at knowledge sharing systems. And it's a thing where we need to get certain approvals before you can access certain information. So as such, you're not going to be eager to say, let me go and retrieve or search for this information which should be there. So you're like, ah, I'm going to need to get my supervisor to write a letter, and that letter needs to be addressed to his boss, and then after his boss gets a moment to see it, then and then only then will I be able to potentially look at this information. But it could also be declined. So, uh, you know what, let me forget about it. Let me find some other way of solving this problem or retrieving this information, or just proceeding with the job as a whole. Okay. Then it goes on to say, if we, they do not measure and state their benefits. So if you guys don't know the benefits of knowledge sharing, all right, would you use it? You wouldn't, OK? And then uh, if they share knowledge in textual representation only. I, Guys, we're living in a world where a lot of us don't like reading. Okay? So if all you're doing is just giving us document after document after document, no videos, no clips, okay? You know, no audios, you know, pictures. You see in your business management textbook, they give you some structured pictures, all right, diagrams that show the steps and so forth. Because they know. If we don't give these guys any images, they will they will they will obviously get bored to death as a result of just reading the text uh, or endless text for that matter. If they are outside the process context, I think I've labored this quite a bit, and I'm sure we 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 get that if this sharing is out of the process, and all we're looking at the capture, it just makes it almost set up for failure, okay? Uh, if they do not support collaboration, okay? You need to make sure that your, your team feels as involved as possible, that they can share their input and thoughts in relation to this knowledge sharing, okay? Right, if the users are afraid of the consequences of their contribution. All right, if... Uh, we fear that uh, our opinions, our suggestions, um, sharing of our experiences with clients might actually come back to bite us. I'm not going to tell you how I handled a certain issue if it was borderline controversial. Does that make sense? Because I need to protect my job. Okay, and then finally, if users perceive a lack of leadership support, 
lack of understanding of the generalities. Okay, so they were just saying, if your manager or your bosses seem confused, you are likely not to take this thing seriously. Kind of like when your lecturer shows up and they seem like they are also getting dribbled by what's going on. How confident are you going to be about the subject matter? If the person who is supposed to be somewhat of an expert is clueless, it's like, ah, what are we actually doing here? Does that make sense? But give them a chance, guys. They're just they're trying their best. Okay. Then specific types of knowledge sharing systems. Okay. So you've got the incident report based. In fact, I've already summarized in like a line or two here. These are the systems. Okay. These are the systems, types of knowledge sharing systems. Okay. So you've got your incident report basis. A centralized system that logs and disseminates information on incidents to enhance organizational learning and prevent recurrence. Alert systems, automated or manual systems that notify stakeholders of critical issues and deviations from normal operations, allowing for timely responses. Okay, so this is basically. You can even think of it as your alarm system. The moment your alarm goes off at home, you know that something is wrong. Does that make sense? Best practices database. These are pretty much your how-to guides. All right. Repositories that store effective methods, processes, and standards proven to yield superior, like superior, enabling knowledge sharing across. Okay, then second from last, lessons learned systems. Systems designed to capture insights from past projects, activities, ensuring that both successes and mistakes contribute to the future improvement. This is where we were talking about. If I am to tell you guys or share with you guys how I dealt with a certain problem, okay, or how we resolve certain issues. But I'm fearful because in that process we made some mistakes. But now your boss might be like, but how could you make such a rookie mistake? If I'm fearful that that might come back to bite me, I'm not going to share my mistakes. Why would I do that? Okay? So, just re-emphasizing that point. Then expertise locator systems. This is what I want you guys to go and do for. For more. Presentation, yes. So, tools that help identify, connect individuals within an organization who possess specific knowledge or skills needed to address current challenges. Tools to help identify and connect individuals who can solve current challenges, okay, because they have specific knowledge and skills, okay. So, yeah, you guys are going to talk to me about that one. Okay. So, then here we have your lessons learned system. Okay. Very nice diagram, just basically explaining how this thing typically works. So, you're obviously collecting the lessons, all right, in what we call a learning, uh, sorry, lessons uh, learned center. Okay. You're then verifying those lessons. What were the actual lessons? What were the, the, the takeaways from this event that took place or from this experience? Does that make sense? Then you go on to say, okay, cool. There are actual lessons that were extracted from this incident or from this event, all right, or from this experience. You can then go on to store those lessons in a repository. Repository is just somewhere where we can information. Okay. You also think of it as a server, if you wish. Right? And then we disseminate the lesson. Okay? So in other words, we communicate it. We share that knowledge and then we go on to apply the lessons. Okay? Remember, all this knowledge sharing is so that we can apply the knowledge. Right? It's not about just having it for the sake of having it. It's always about applying 
this information. So there you have your support organizational processes, okay, uh, for your lessons learned system. Okay. So here you can see again, we're going back to the expertise locator knowledge sharing system. You can find that, take a picture of this slide and share it on the group, please. You can find that on page 170 to 175. Okay, so then what I want you to touch on is the purpose of the system. Access method, okay, self-assessment, uh, participation, tax or nomi, okay, and then levels of competencies, okay. So that is what I want you guys to do. You're going to split into two groups. One group, let's see how best shall we split this. Okay. Um, Okay, so the second group will deal with the role of ontologies and knowledge tax nominees in the development of expertise locator systems. And the other one will deal with expertise locator systems sharing systems. Okay, so those are the two groups. Next week, when we come, the first thing that we will do will be your presentation. Okay? So do be ready for that. Do be ready for that. Uh, yeah, I want to see PowerPoint. You can also go on to, to you can go on to uh, use illustrations and examples as well. Okay? So please be ready, be ready, be ready for that. Let's go on. Okay. How do the presentation be so? Okay, let's say fifteen minutes. No more than fifteen. So ten seconds is okay. Let's say fifteen minutes. <laughs> Since you're so eager to, to, to make it short, I'm going to say 15 minutes. How many people are we going to have roughly in the group? Because the number of people Yeah, let's say we'll have about five people in a group. Uh, you guys must have at least three presenters. At least. So you guys share the load. So what, what happens? Um, oh, by the way, if one of your group members disappears, you must still present it. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, what if the other group just decides to not come? To not come? Yeah. They'll present where you went next. Look, when they lose out, they lose out on those ice marks. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here they're now just talking to the shortcomings of knowledge sharing systems. Okay, challenge to make knowledge meaningful. Guys, everything you do in life it needs to be meaningful. You can't just do things for the sake of doing it. So the easiest way to get buy-in is to make sure that employees, staff members, clients, whoever's a part of your knowledge system needs to see the value in the knowledge that is being shared. Does that make sense? Then, here we spoke about this lack of contextual components. If I cannot contextualize the knowledge being shared into my day-to-day -day job, they are talking about contextualizing, right? If I don't see the, 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 uh, if I don't see how I can apply this, it's going to be a problem. It's not going to be of much use. How to get more value from their own knowledge? Too many repositories. Okay, so if you have too many repositories, that's also a bit of a problem. You must develop a one-stop access point 
in an ideal world, design classification system. So classifying, okay, this is knowledge on our processes. This is knowledge on how to do certain things, all right? How to uh, complete certain tasks, okay? Then entice employees to find what they need, okay? So we must also, again, like we mentioned earlier, find a way of motivating employees to use the knowledge sharing system. Now, remember when we spoke about tacit knowledge, here they're just speaking again in the knowledge sharing uh, context. To share tacit knowledge, remember, tacit knowledge is the stuff we can't put on documents, is it? You can do that via knowledge communities. You can do that via knowledge networks and then obviously communities of practice. All of which we have highlighted before, but I'm sure they're just adding more meat to it. If you look at page 189. And that, ladies and gentlemen, you can see. Again, use these recap to see what is important. Okay, to see what is important in the, in the unit. So we will end off our lecture here for today. Um, and then next week when I see you, you guys can then go on to present